Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. In the last video, we covered the basics of creating this functional compass that you see on the top of the screen using the Cinti Sci-Fi HUD pack. If you missed that video, make sure to check that out first. The link's in the description below. So today in part two of our compass tutorial, we'll be taking things up a notch by adding objective markers that'll be displayed on our compass. And this will help players to navigate to key points of interest in your game with ease. Before we dive in today, I want to let you know that you can get this Cinti Sci-Fi HUD pack through my affiliate link in the description below for discounts up to 70% off. If you enjoy my content and want to support the channel, you can also become a Patreon member via Patreon. And by joining, you'll get access to exclusive content and features that will allow you to make special requests and tutorial requests via our Discord. And you can also join our Discord for free, where you can discuss your game development journey, share tips, and help each other out. So let's go ahead and get started with adding those objective markers to our compass. So in my content browser, I'm just going to right click create a blueprint class and make an actor component. And I'll call this something like component marker. So I'll call this component marker, double click to open this up. And basically what's going to happen is we're going to be having two compasses. One of the compass is the regular one that we made in the last video. And this one's going to be the compass that's only going to be displaying these objective icons. So if you open your interface sci-fi soldier HUD folder, then you can just type in objective to find all the objective markers that you may want to add to your screen. So for this one, I'll just do this clean one or I'll add this small clean one, for example. So after making that, so after making this actor component, I'm just going to duplicate our compass and call this M underscore compass icon, double click to open this up. And I'm just going to replace our texture sample with another image. So I'm just going to drag uh, something like this one on or this one. I'll just drag that image into my content browser. And then I will also just drag it into the compass just like this to create that texture sample and connect this. And now when I hit apply, make sure you connect that alpha to the opacity, and then you'll just see the objective marker as is. So I also want to make this into a variable so that I can change this into a different icon. So I'm going to right click and convert this to a parameter and I'll call this icon and I'll hit apply and save and we can close this. So now I'm just going to go back to our third person map and we're going to duplicate our compass widget and I'm going to duplicate this and call this WBP underscore icon and I'll double click to open this up and we can right click on overlay and replace it with child. And that's just to get rid of that overlay. So in our graph, you'll see that we have the same functionality as we did before. I'm just going to change this from compass to something like compass, the compass icon that we have and the rest we can leave the same and I'll just hit compile save and I'm going to grab out this compass material and I'm going to set the texture parameter value and I'm just going to add this. I'm actually going to shift everything over here to the right quite a bit and just plug these execution pins in. And for the value, I'm going to right click and promote this to a variable and I'll call this icon. And now for the icon, while this is highlighted, I want to make this instance editable and I want to expose this on spawn. So now, as you can see over here, we're just getting our player's location and dividing it by 360 so that we can define where north, south, east, west are just like our compass. But I actually need to space this out and break this link and add a couple more steps in order to showcase the icon. So what I need to do here is get player so all I need to do for this is get our player character and then I'm going to control I'm going to tag this into a get actor location I'm going to connect this to a get actor location and then from here I also want to find look at rotation so that wherever our character is turning and looking at will pretty much define where the icon is but the start will define our where our viewpoint is but we also need the target to be the icon so in order to get the icons location we're just going to drag this out and get actor location we're going to drag out the icon, get icon, and then drag this out and get actor. So we actually need a variable for an actor. So I'm just going to create a variable called actor and change this type to actor, which will be a object reference, just like that. So I'm going to drag this out to get our actor, and then we're going to get the actor location. And then we're going to, we're just going to drag this return value into the target. And now I'm going to, now I'm going to split the struct. Now I'm going to split the struct because we want to subtract the Z values together and then divide it by 360. So I'm going to drag this out, look for the minus sign and then subtract it by this and then plug this in to divide by 360. So I'll hit compile and save. And now back in our component marker and on begin play, we're just going to, we're going to get our player characters HUD. So I'm going to get player character and our cast to our third person character. And I need to get the HUD for this. So I'm going to head over to my third person character and see what I call this value. So this is just called HUD. So I'm actually going to promote this to a value called HUD. 
So make sure that in your third person character is when you create the HUD on after your begin play, you actually promote this to a variable and then just set it to your viewport by clicking add to viewport. And then back in my component marker, I'm just gonna cast out to get the HUD itself. So I'm gonna look for a get HUD, just like that. And then the target will be my WVV compass. And now I wanna get the overlay panel because that's what we're gonna be adding it to. So now we'll drag this out and create widget. And we're gonna choose that compass icon. So now for the class, I'll select my WVP icon. And one thing I forgot to do is we need to be able to see the actor to set it here. So go back to your WVP icon, highlight over actor and make sure it's instance editable and expose this on spawn, hit compile and save. And now when I go back, I'm just gonna refresh this and you'll see the actor appear here. And we'll drag out from the actor and get owner. The icon will be a variable. So I'm just gonna right click promote to variable and I'll leave the name as icon. And now for the overlay panel, I'm just gonna look for an add child to overlay. And I'll drag this in right next to this, like so, and make the return values to content. And now we'll compile and save. And make sure that the icon variable is instance editable. And you can just do that by hitting this check mark or clicking on this eyeball icon. So I compile and save. And now at the beginning of my component marker, I'm gonna to wanna to add a small delay just to give it some time for initialization. So I'll do a delay until next tick just to see if this one works. And in my map, pretty much what I did was just head over to the details of an object. So for example, my cube, and I clicked add and added my component marker like so and added it here. And since we made the instance editable, we can just select any texture that we want. So now when I hit play, and I turn to my right, you'll see that the texture is showing on my compass. And so for example, it's always gonna point where that cube is. So if the cube is south of me, then it will point to where that cube is. And that's pretty much how you add your icons to your compass. Thanks for watching Code with Row. Like, subscribe, comment below what you wanna see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.